Oh, wow. I'm actually, like, trying to destroy this thing. You can see it's definitely breaking, but I'm still having no problems going forward. Let's see the damage we got right- What the hell? How is this thing still working so good? It is literally losing its side wheel. What is going on, all you beautiful people? Dre here, and welcome back to the best Besiege creations. This week, we are starting off with the hot dog tank, as I like to call it. But no, this is actually a fuel tank attached to a tank track, basically. And as you would expect with a fuel tank, you can press a button and it explodes. So I was supposed to do that. You're not supposed to break under your own weight. Damn it. What the? <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we don't need the fuel tank today then because this whole thing fell over. It's actually kind of beautiful how it's slowly falling apart, though, so I kind of like this. We can compare with the slow destruction with the big one. Anyways, you know what? Let's actually go nice and close anyways and see if we can just help it out at the end here. I don't even think we're going to get there in time because this thing is rapidly falling down. Gotta say, it's nice to have a destructible environment that doesn't totally lag this game because we can actually go at a decent frame rate. But yeah, we're just going to... There we go. Explode the actual tank and help out a little bit. Obviously, that's not the goal, though. Let's try and actually take this thing down. So yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Spiderling Studios. This is the developer of Besiege, if you are curious. And uh, yeah, I'm assuming this is their studio anyways. I mean, they got the Besiege statues everywhere. It actually is a really nice building here. Very basic, which is nice because, uh, like I said, you don't have the leg you have to deal with. Now, are we going to be able to get this thing inside? Oh man, this is gonna be a- no, I don't think we're gonna be able to. Maybe we could push it around a little bit. We might have to blow it at the front door though, and if I- unless I can actually- no, I can't get through here. Okay, well, this is still a good spot, and it's already crumbling because I was pushing it a little bit. So let's help it out, and explode this thing. There we go. And please tell me you can actually destroy this thing now. Oh, sorry about that zooming, guys. I didn't- I don't know why that happened. But yeah, watch this thing stay up now when it fell under its own weight before, because I'm thinking it actually... Oh, nope, there we go. Okay, so we did have a little bit of a blast radius up top, and that's gonna make it crumble once again. Gotta be honest, I was hoping for a bit more of destruction with that uh, fuel tank, but it's a fuel tank. It's not a bomb, so I guess that's to be expected. And actually, is it constantly on fire? I mean, that would be smart if they designed it that way where there's constantly fire coming out of the fuel tank after the explosion we actually did less damage though as you can see there is still a lot of this building left all right so yeah we need more firepower why not a movable mortar this is the csm 100b and uh as you would expect it's a mortar launcher actually we got what is going on here we got Looks like, I'm not sure what those are up top, but yeah, I haven't actually used this yet, so we're gonna learn with about it together, and, uh, F for camera here, what, oh, oh, it actually has an aiming camera. Alright, interesting, that's actually really useful, and clearly we're way off center. Alright, so let's try something like that. I'm not really sure where exactly we're supposed to aim it, probably in the middle of the screen here. Uh, but yeah, there's no actual aiming reticle or anything, so it's a mortar. It's probably not gonna be that accurate anyways. Let's try and use this sucker. Okay, so we gotta turn on that bottom steam cannon. We got steam coming through it now. I love the look of this thing. It just looks so old school, and I don't know. I just really like the design of it. Uh, anyways, we're gonna load up our first bomb here, and oh, look at that. So these things go sideways. That's actually a really smart way to do this. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> What? Uh, can I, uh, what happened? Okay, obviously it exploded in the actual barrel. I like that the shrapnel is actually launching at the uh, building here and still destroying it. So I, I would say it's still a success, but not as intended. All right, let's retry that again. So we're going to turn this thing on and uh, see if we can actually launch one this time. So we're going to try that again and hold it down. I really like the way it actually loads it up. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Now we just gotta wait. Are we actually- we're not totally aimed up this time, but we'll see kind of how far this thing shoots. Wow, it's actually- it's getting a lot of air time. Is this falling apart? Ah, oh, come on! Don't do that! Where the hell did this bomb go, though? Unless the- unless the bomb hit and didn't explode, that wouldn't make sense. The bomb would definitely explode. Oh, there it is! Holy crap, that's a perfect hit! Oh my god, that had such long air time. Like, god, I didn't expect that at all. Alright, let's just launch bombs like crazy then. So we're just gonna- Hopefully not explode this thing, and slowly launch the bombs here. There goes that one. 
So far, so good. We're not exploding, so that's good. There goes another. Damn it! All right, well, it's <laughs> totally destroyed anyways. We should have some bombs coming here soon. I like this thing, you know? You, you don't know if it's going to actually hit the target or explode yourself. It's kind of like a Russian roulette game with a very <laughs> dangerous weapon. Uh, but yeah, it's still really fun to use. I want to see how those top bombs work. Oh, here comes the bomb. A little bit off center that time. We should have another one slowly coming in after that. If we could hit the top of it, that would be amazing because we got a lot of rubble here. Wow. They, I, I shot the bomb like directly after this one, yet it's still... I don't see it anywhere, so maybe it just stayed up in the sky. That or we totally missed it. Regardless, it did its job. We had a direct hit, and it destroyed the place. I was hoping for a little bit more of reliability, but like I said, it's kind of fun with how dangerous it is. So yeah, I can actually drop these grenades. Now, these won't explode, which is pretty cool, and it looks like hopefully they'll slowly roll down. Yeah, we got two going out. Uh, oh, I actually got to open up the other one, too. So you open up both of these. That's actually cool. And we can explode these whenever we want. So we'll let these guys go first, uh, just because I want to try out those as well. And we'll see how many bombs we can... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Why are they not going far? We got, we got the building break again. That one went a, de a decent amount of ways, but uh, clearly not as far as the bombs at all. So... Like, we don't have to do it anyways, because it already, it's already totally destroyed, but I'm trying to drop a bomb down just for fun. And I guess, you know what? Let's just end this thing's misery, because it's clearly not very good at throwing grenades. So I'm just going to go over here as the uh, building crumbles at my distance. I don't think we hit it at all with, with, a, with a grenade, but we'll see here. We shot six of them. I'm seeing four right here, but here we go. Oh, wow, there was actually one over there. We had a couple that actually made it. There comes the bomb, too. Good timing, bomb. Ah, oh, okay. I was really hoping this building would be a little bit more stable because it's kind of frustrating that it destroys under its own weight from time to time. But, hey, that was fun. We had some pretty cool weapons there and a non-laggy building, which is nice. All right, and would you check it out, guys? We got the Mega Ramp from Beam NG. Like, this is legit. We even got the pool that we can land in and the distance uh, calculator here. Now, I've never really been impressed with flying physics in Besiege, or should I say jumping physics, because the planes feel good, but jumping has never felt well. So I really hope this one can feel good. It really depends on the modded vehicle as well, because the physics on vehicles could be totally crazy. But we'll see how what kind of air we can get here. I like that the indicator is pretty obvious here. Yeah, as you can see, it's just compared to like, wow, wow, we split that thing directly in half. But compared to like BeamNG, you just don't get the distance, and it doesn't feel accurate when you're jumping with cars. I mean, we want 50 meters there. Uh, let's see if we can do a little bit better than that. We got a few other vehicles here that are obviously a little faster than a Toyota 86. All right, something with a little more pep in its step. Let's see if we can uh, launch this thing. Obviously, I'd like to make it to the pool. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Uh, oh, wow, we exploded ourselves on the on the actual ramp as well. Yeah, as you can see, like, this is the problem. I don't know what it is with the physics in Besiege. When it comes to car jumping, it just doesn't work. And I think it just comes down due to the modded amounts of the cars. They're just way too complex now in terms of physics. And, uh, yeah, they don't actually get the accurate trajectory that you would expect uh but maybe we can get one here that will do well oh god see and the problem is the suspension can't deal with these jumps either there's got to be something that has enough suspension to deal with this that's actually fast as well this might be it that felt great okay there we go oh my god it's like i'm flying right now yeah the physics Obviously, of this car, pretty interesting to say the least. Oh, we kind of just floated down there. We made it to 120 at least. That was actually a decent jump. Still, nowhere near the end, though. Let's try one more good supercar for good luck. This is remarkably fast, too. So, if it does not explode itself, I think we got a contender here for, yeah, definitely the forest throw. I like that I can actually kind of control it in air. And you can tell the aerodynamics of the car, very similar to a plane. Uh, that one was by far the best, and that wasn't too bad at all. 230, that was actually a really decent jump, so I'm happy with that. The Type 23 was the champion of the jumping here. Let's just ride this off and crash it down, because that's always fun, too. Look at that. What, what a landing. 
Well, Marty McFly would be proud, guys, because we have the DeLorean time machine here that actually works. We can go back in time, guys. This is this is legit. I gotta say, when it comes to the detail, too, this is actually amazing. Specifically, this is a replica of the time machine DeLorean at the end of the first movie and the beginning of the second. So I guess there was different ones. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a huge Back to the Future fan, but uh, I have watched it a couple times. Uh, but yeah, legendary vehicle that is now in Besiege. We've seen a couple before, but nothing as detailed as this. So let's see how it actually drives here. Well, actually, we should probably close the doors first. That would be smart. So uh, yeah, you can actually close the doors one at a time, or you can close both of them at the same time. Never mind, I lied. Why is it not working? Oh, that's because I was pressing the wrong button. I'm smart. Okay, there we go. But yes, we have the doors closed now, and I do love the whole Lamborghini-style doors. I mean, it is a DeLorean after all. Gotta say... Handling already, I can tell, is not so good, but I don't think a DeLorean's gonna handle good. Uh, but yeah. The whole point is, can we get this thing up to 88 miles per hour? We're going 134 kilometers an hour here. Actually, my velocity meter doesn't actually have miles per hour on it, so... Uh, I know probably we're going at least 88 now, going 146, so we should be time traveling right now. Now, the developer says all you need to do to time travel is press space, so we're gonna do that? And look at that. We try Back in time to when we introduced this. <laughs> I mean, did you really expect there'd be time travel? I, I I like it though. That's a smart idea because you are really going back to where you spawned the vehicle. So is it time travel? Is it not? I don't know. That's not the only thing this thing can do though, because well, for some reason it can fly, as with a lot of things in in Besiege. So we're gonna hit the flight gear and. We are indeed floating. I should probably start floating a little bit higher. There we go. Isn't it majestic? I don't know how to steer an air. I didn't think about that, but uh, yeah, it just seems to float very well. Let's not forget to put the wheels into flight mode, though. There we go. And I, I don't think there's actually a forward thrust, so I'm kind of, it's not really flying. It's just floating with style. Never mind. I lied again. There is forward thrust, so we're going to give it some forward thrust here. And I still can't steer it, though. Like, it's great that there's forward thrust. But, uh, yeah, it could be really nice to steer this thing. We do have reverse as well, though, which is nice. I also forgot it has flames as well, so that's cool. But, yeah, I, I really can't control this at all while flying, at least in terms of steering. Oh, God, this is... Whoa, we're, we are freaking flying right now. And there goes the legendary time-traveling DeLorean. I guess we won't time travel anymore, guys. All right, now this is a weapon if I've ever seen one. Look at the size of this, guys. So this is the... Well, I'm gonna get this totally wrong. The Schwerer Gustav. It is a railway cannon, and it is a major one indeed. Now, this is actually pretty cool because this mod, it doesn't work with the railway mod that's in Besiege, uh, but it actually brings a track of its own in with the actual creation. So you can ride it on its own track. It's I think it's too big for the other ordinary railway track. So let's actually, before we... You know, shoot this thing. Let's try and put it into gear here and see how speedy it is. We're actually going... We have to obviously load this pretty damn slow because it is such a big creation. But we're going 25, 26 kilometers an hour. It is picking up speed here. I want to see if it can do the turn, though, without derailing itself. All right, yeah, so pretty simple track system. I'm actually curious how they're staying on. It looks like it's just this little metal plate here that's on a spring that stays in between the uh, track lines, as you can see. And that's how it keeps in the middle. But actually... We're going, it looks like its max speed is about 30 kilometers an hour, so we're going a decent speed. I guess it's not fast enough to actually derail this thing, though, especially on the turn, which we're just starting to get into. I want to see, I mean, it's such a long chassis, too. I thought with this turn, unless the, the actual tracks swivel, I thought I'd have a hard time turning. Oh, it does look like it sw swivels, so it has uh, basically four different tracks here, and uh, they each swivel, so... It can do these turns. Wow, the, the detail on this thing is really, really cool. Well, seems to work just fine on the track, though. It's uh, still keeping full speed right now. We are definitely fully committed to the turn now. And, uh, yeah, no sign of derailment at all. No sign of even, like, shaking or anything. This is probably the most stable train that I've ever seen in this game, actually. Uh, but, yes, that's not the interesting part of this, obviously. At least for me, anyways. I mean, maybe some of you guys are trained guys. Some of you women are trained women. Uh, but I like to see this cannon work, so unless the game crashes, because this is a pretty big creation. So yes, we have obviously a very large caliber gun on this. To be more specific, it's a cannon that's 115 times power, 
which is ridiculous. Most of them, from what I've seen, the modded ones at least are like 20-ish. So 115 times. I don't even know if it's going to register these blocks because uh, sometimes when you got cannonballs going too quick, it just goes through the actual castle. So yeah, we got a really good aiming reticle here. And obviously, we're all aimed up, so this is perfect right now. Looks like, oh, we can even, oh, that's a nice view here. I think we will shoot it with that view. Obviously, it's aimed up, though, so let's just let it go. So first of all, we have to hit X. This is the ready to fire button. Oh, it's actually, okay, I'm assuming that's an indicator that I press the button, maybe. But yeah, that fire turns on. And then we press C, and this thing should hopefully, oh my god, that was so fast. Okay, I, I gotta see that out of the actual view, because I wanna see it close up. That is a freaking rocket. I'd actually like to test this on a distance map, but obviously it's a giant train, so I can't really put it on too many maps here. That I, that registered, though. That was crazy. Okay, we're going to try that again. We obviously know it's all aimed up, so I'm just going to slow this down. And it did aim a bit high, actually, so we're going to drop it down kind of to the front door area here. It's still a little bit wobbly. It's a very heavy barrel, obviously, but that should be good right there, I'm thinking. So we're going to get out of this view. And once again, I got to press that X button, but I want to see this thing hit from the actual front here to see the sheer velocity of this thing. So we'll hit X. I can still see the fire from over here, so that's convenient. I actually like that. And we're running this at 2% right now, so you can judge how fast this thing truly is. I've pressed the button. There's a little bit of a delay, obviously. So we'll see it in a second here. There it goes. 2%. So it is going... 50 times faster than that. Well, 48, for, sorry, 49 times faster than that. That is ridiculous. That would be able to go through anything in this game, obviously. And with ease. That might be the fastest cannon we've ever seen, because that 2%, it didn't feel like we were only going 2% right there. So yeah, I know you guys like your weapons of war. I don't think we've seen a cannon this large. We've seen, you know, creations bigger than this, but uh, yeah, it's nothing of this caliber, I think, in terms of cannon. So that was amazing. All right, and to end off, I thought we'd get away from the weapons of war. It's been a pretty aggressive episode today. So we got a tank like you've probably never seen before. I mean, I've never seen a guy just hanging out on the top of a tank before. Uh, this is simply called the off-road tank. It's not a weapon. It's just meant for off-roading, and it looks fantastic. Have you noticed the fan on the back? Well, I can turn that on for a speed boost. Oh, my God. Is he actually... Whoa. Okay, this just blew my mind. So he's actually using those levers to move the tank treads back and forth. So it's kind of got like uh, skid steer steering. That's the only thing I know that has that type of steering. But yeah, this is supposed to be really good at going off-road. It is by far the fastest tank I've used in a long time. And it's nice to see another fast tank. Uh, we used to get a lot of those back in the early days of Besiege when Core was designing tanks. Uh, since she has stopped designing, really, few, very few people have focused on fast-based tanks, which are by far the funnest things to play with in Besiege. So let's see. I've boosted it. Dude, this is amazing. Like, I haven't had very many things go up this hill. I'm not in invinci invincibility either, so this tank tread is remarkable. I gotta give you props, Arshielin. This is the designer of this tank, because I've never seen you before. I just lost my head. But you just made an amazing tank. This is so fun to use. I'm so excited to play more with this now. How fast can we go with this thing? Let's uh, get it in a straight line. It's looking about 85 kilometers an hour. With treads, that is ridiculous. We are kind of drifting in a tank right now. It's kind of blowing me away. It also has cameras for that added realism here. Oh, wow. This is actually a really nice camera, too. We got... Actually, it looks like it's just that one camera. It said cameras with plural, but I guess it's only one. I want to see if we can get some air here. So I boosted on my, my fan. Let's see. This is going to be a hard hit. Oop, oop. It's still really heavy, so yeah, you can't really seem to get air very well. Oh, wow. I'm actually, like, trying to destroy this thing. You can see it's definitely breaking, but I'm still having no problems going forward. Let's see the damage we got right... What the hell? How is this thing still working so good? It is literally losing its side wheels. But hey, we're still having fun. All right, guys, so I'm gonna... <laughs> There goes my engine. I'm gonna have to play some more with this one. I, I'm gonna have to put it through some of the testing courses later because uh, I didn't expect this to be so fun. I thought we would just end off with a little basic creation, but hey, this might be the star of the episode here. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Besiege. As always, if you don't want to download any of these creations, uh, links will be in the description where you can do so. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I hope you guys don't mind the lacking amount of Besiege episodes. I'm still gonna try and get them out, but we're only gonna release them now when there's awesome creations to showcase like these ones in this today's episode 
So yeah, thanks for watching and liking, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.